incredible series of spectacles this side of the vast and mysterious continents of Africa, Asia, and Australia. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up, folks. Billy boy, come back. Lucy. Let us be dazzled New York and delighted. Well, how do, Miss Owens? Sheriff? Mayor? You come to be entertained or electrified? I came to be paid. Oh, you have a mortgage on the circus, too, Mr. Hancock? Helen, why don't you run on ahead and get the ticket? Fine woman. She's sharp as a tack. Colonel, owe you some money, Sam? He owes me $12.50 for hay and grain, and I'm going to collect it. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, just the man I wanted to see. Here, boy, let only the good people enter. Yes. 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 That, uh, that business matter. I'll have that money for you first thing in the morning. Now, here are some tickets. Now, have a wonderful time. Hurry, hurry, right this way to the greatest spectacle on Earth. This way, folks. Hi. Hello. Why does he talk so funny? Lucy, because I'm English. He's English. What's English? This incredible creature is estimated to be 84 years old <laughs> and was captured by Colonel Ryder himself on the snowy mountains of Tibet. That's a yak. I'm a duck. The children are enjoying every word. And this here is our Zambesian zebra. Feeds only on the tender petals of African violets. Oh, ladies, you, you can't possibly mean it. Oh, yes, yes we, we do. do. This here is our last show. We ain't risking our lives and then wore out ropes again. My lovely Lottie, my lovely Lizzie, I will see that your ropes are repaired just for the night, of course, because I've already ordered new equipment, which should be arriving any day now. You go inside. People are waiting. Oh, listen, you told us that time after time, but we're still yes, waiting. Yes, of course, yes. <laughs>
I now take great pride and affection in presenting the Ladere sisters of Birds of Paradise in their rose garden in the sky. See you carry down the good tradition. The show must go on, all packed up and ready for the day's adventures, are we? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Well, let's uh, get going. We're doing Bradford Junction this afternoon. That's what I mean. They said they weren't going to Bradford Junction. They just all quit. Now, boy, don't, don't, don't spread rumors. It's, it's bad for morale. Things aren't as bad as they seem. They're worse. They're taking Shadrach with them. Oh, well, lady. All packed up, ready to go, are we? Here, Lonnie, let me help you with that. No, we quit. It's out. It's right here, Nick Mayor. It's Hobgunook. That's all right. What did she say? Uh, last night broke her the, the camel's straw. Well, now, we've all gone through these little difficulties before. <laughs> last night's rain was just plain bad luck, that's all. That's your trouble, Colonel. You live by luck, and this time it's all run out. What's that still, sir? Oh, Colonel, this circus is finished, and so are we. Our equipment's wore out, the, the tent's torn to shreds, and we got no money to fix anything. Well, well, now, that's today. There's always tomorrow. Yeah, well, we'll clean up in Bradford Junction. I, I, I guarantee it. You got a poker game going, Colonel? Still, how could you? Colonel, you gambled away everything we ever owned. You lost a real menagerie in Shelbyville, and the money to buy a new tent in Roanoke. And... Now, what about a green field? And Millbrook. And Hadley's Corner. That wasn't his fault, Lizzie. He said it was a crooked game. No, no, Davy, I lied. You're right. You're, you're all absolutely right. Uh, I've been a villain and a cad. It's best I go my erring way alone. I'll stick with you, Uncle Rufus. Oh, faithful boy. Your mother brought you up well. You know, I, I don't worry about myself. It, it, it's all of you. You see, uh... Uh, what are you going to do this late in the season? I mean, uh, where will you go? As a matter of fact, who will take you? That's him. Light of a rest. Maybe Molly Jeffries. And then, of course, you'll need money for travel and for costumes. Uh, on the other hand, if we draw a big crowd in Bradford Junction, and they do love us in Bradford Junction, why well, then, uh, I suppose, uh, well, maybe it's best that we... Finish it now, once and for all. Now, wait a minute, Colonel. There's no need to be hasty. We might be willing to go along with you for a couple of weeks, but on one condition. What's that? No more gambling. My good man, you have my promise. From now on, you'll find me absolutely dependable and trustworthy. Now, let's sneak out of here before I have to pay that feed bill.
just a short two-hour journey, my boy. And rest assured, in Bradford Junction, a joyful welcome awaits us all. I want my eight dollars now or get off my property. Eight dollars? I never paid more than four dollars in my life. Dad, blame, wheel. Can you fix it still? I don't know, Colonel. Look here. You didn't pay nothing last year. You just took off. That's why it's eight dollars this year. And in advance, right now. My good man, you'll get your pound of flesh in due time. I ain't looking for no pound or nothing. Just my eight bucks. Can't you see I have a catastrophe here? Uh, looks like I'm stuck with you anyway. Well, you've got to pay me tonight. And that's it, Colonel. Davy, unload the cage wagon. We're here to stay. Don't got it! That's done it! Oh, Stilts, for heaven's sakes, what have you got yourself into now? I busted the ram clear in half. We're gonna need a blacksmith. No. Is there anything else that can go wrong now? Cole, blimey! Who's that? He's stuffed, you know. Scared me at first when I saw him. Uncle Rufus the Starway! Oh, no. What are you doing here? Joining the circus, sir. Where are you from? Hancock. He was with the sheriff last night. Sheriff? He's my grandpa. I was only going to join for a couple days. Then I was going home. Well, you're going home now. Stills, Stills, would you load that broken wheel on the cage wagon, take it into the blacksmith and Hancock? The boy will ride back with you. Aww. Now, 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 I know there never was a boy who didn't want to join the circus, but I'm not hiring any sheriff's grandsons this season. Now, uh, Davy, we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep you company on the way back. Just how do I pay the blacksmith, Colonel? Four bits, you have that, don't you? I got only 35 cents. Well, well dicker with him, man. Go on. The rest of you stay here until I get back. DeMarco, help me saddle Gretchen. Where are you going? Ladies. We are in urgent need of a financial backer. This has to be the finest place in town. It's just a plain old house. Me, I wish I could travel to the circus like you do. I mean, I don't see how it could be lonely like you said. Oh, just sometimes. Of course, I'm grateful to the Colonel for all he's done for me. Your parents in the circus too? They were. They worked on the flying traps. The what? You know, flying trapeze, way up near the top. They were called the Royal British Flyers, only they weren't really royalty. That's just the name they took when we left London. Children, here's some lemonade if you want. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, Mom. Well, what happened to you folks? Lucy, be quiet. Oh, that's all right. It was an accident. They happen in circuses. Hey, let's play hide and seek. Lucy, you're it. Why me? Come on, Davy. Why do I always have to be it? What's it? She is. Well, how come he ain't it? What do I have to do? Hide from her. Ain't you ever played hide and seek before? No. Boy, you English kids got a lot to learn. Billy, wait. I was it last time. You want to play? You're it again. One, two, doggone it. Three, four, why do I always have to be it? That's a very fair offer, Mr. Corbin. It's just that I'd rather not make that decision right now. <laughs> Missy, when you get inside, will you tell that new conductor of mine to play louder? Yes, Miss Jeffries. Our customers want noise, not music. Sure you won't change your mind? I am sorry, Mr. Corbett. Too bad you had that long ride out here for nothing. Well, thanks anyway. But if you ever decide to sell one, my offer's always good. You can wire me at the Chicago Zoo. I'll do that. Goodbye. Miss Jeffries, one more try. $2,000, one elephant. <laughs> sorry again, Mr. Corbett. All right. I'll raise that bid to $3,000. Rufus! Bobby, my love. <laughs> you old rascal. $2,000 for one elephant? Well, now, you know, all the zoos need elephants. He's the Chicago Zoo. How are you, why, you old buzzard? Good to see you, my dear. Don't you give me that my dear stuff. 
You give me a hug. Uh, well, I see you're uh, doing just fine, Molly, just fine. Sure, sure I am. I got three shows this season, and I am buying out the Williams brothers in the fall. Well, I rejoice in your good fortune, my dear. Come on, sit down now. Come on, make yourself comfy. Now, tell me, tell me, Rufus, how are you doing this season? Well, business is incredible, Molly, simply incredible. Of course, I've always regretted the loss of my greatest star. Oh, Rufus. Oh, yes, Molly Jeffers, the greatest equestrian that ever lived. And now the smartest businesswoman I've ever met. Rufus. And soon to become the richest, after you've taken advantage of my generous offer to invest in... <laughs> I'm never sure summer's here until you arrive with your annual generous offer. For a mere $1,000, Molly. Every year I promise myself I will not lend you another penny. For just $750, and Molly. And every year I have broken that promise. 500 Until this year. I'm standing pat. 200 100 Mm-mm. No, sir. You just lose it in another poker game. Oh, Molly, I've reformed. I, I swear it. Oh, now, Rufus, stop lying to me and to yourself. With your know-how, you ought to be running one of the best shows in this country. But you have gambled and lost until you got nothing left but a tenth-rate mud show that ain't worth a plug nickel. Molly, I need eight dollars. I've got a one-night stand in Bradford Junction, and I don't have the ground rent. I tell you what I will do, Rufus. I'll give you a job. A job? I'll take on all your performers. I'll, I'll buy them new costumes, new, new equipment. Oh, Molly, a job. How could you? Rufus, wait, wait a minute. Oh, you forgot something, didn't you? It's ground rent. Oh, Molly. <laughs> Thank you. You really are true blue. Nice folks. Real thoughtful asking me to stay for dinner, too. Uh-huh. Too bad about the Mrs. Luce and her husband so young. Of course, there's nothing like a family to help keep away the lonelies. You're a darn fool, you know. If somebody offered me a chance to spend the summer, I'd jump at it. I couldn't do that. Uncle Rufus needs me. All he needs is somebody for odd jobs and selling peanuts. If it wasn't you, it'd be some other kid. Davy, it's not like he was your real uncle. You know, all of a sudden I can remember my mom real clear. She's kind of like Mrs. Owens, wasn't she? Your mom was a fine woman, Davy, in every way. I reckon that goes for Miss Owens, too. Still, I figure she was just being nice. I mean, I wouldn't really fit him back there, would I? Oh, spec you could learn to. Yeah, spec maybe I could. Get up, Matilda. Surprise. Good morning, Rufus. Hello, Davy. How's this old reprobate been treating you? Just fine, man. Phil, good to see you're still with us. You too, Molly. What are you doing here? How was Bradford Junction? Well, the people turned out in droves, Molly. Uh, there must have been at least, um, we... We didn't quite break even, Molly. <clears throat> Rufus. I've been thinking things over, and I've decided to make you that loan after all. You have? Uh-huh. Try her out, Jake. An elephant. Well, 
Thank you, Molly. I would have preferred a modicum of cash. She's beautiful. What's her name? Queenie. She is money in the bank, Rufus. Guaranteed to give that old menagerie of yours some real life class. Hello, Queenie. I'm Davy. She's gentle, too. And smart. She picks up things real quick. <laughs> here, here, give me that. Give me my hat. Molly, that animal is malicious. She is not. She just playful. I just bought her this spring, so she isn't fully trained yet. Untrained, eh? Well, now, I have no fixed prices for these things, but I think $10 a week would... Fine, fine. That's just about what I'd figured. You give me $10 each week, and she's yours for the summer. Me pay you. You take it or leave it, Rufus. She won't be in any trouble. I can handle her, Uncle Rufus. Nonsense, boy. Stilts, how are you with elephants? Well, I'm really better with seals, but I worked with them one season, Colonel. All right, she's your responsibility. All right, but uh, I'll need a helper. That's a good idea. She likes Davy already. Just remember, Davy, most people try to pat an elephant on the trunk. Uh-uh, they don't like that. You want to get her to do something for you. Just sort of scratch her behind the ears, like this. Or maybe thump her on the shoulder. Like that. Yes, ma'am. Here is my schedule for the summer. You just be sure Rufa sends me $10 every week, huh? And returns Queenie to me in Morgantown on the 15th of September. All right, Jake. Oh, Rufus, this is one loan I know I'm going to get back. You can't ante an uh, elephant. Molly, uh, it does seem to me the way elephants eat that $10 a week is... The uh, elephant, Jake. ...has a very fair price. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> You're an old scallywag. But... I love you. Davy, you take good care of Queenie. Yes, ma'am, I sure will. All right, beauty. Let's go! And now, presenting Queenie, the ponderous packager, the largest elephant in captivity! her toe. Oh, yeah, she did stub her toe. Oh, the really loves us tonight. <laughs> Wonderful, Emily, dear. Were the elephants make up? Uh, sure, that's what I say. Keep a care of Queenie, Davy. She's a do all right. I'd say we all did all right. Listen to that money jingle. Isn't that a lovely sound? Our luck has changed, Stills. No more one-night stands. When we get to Wrightstown tomorrow night, I'm going to book us for two nights, maybe three. Thanks to Queenie here. Well, she's been a help, of course. Keep up the good work, old girl. <laughs> You better put Queenie to bed. I'll look after him. Yes, Stilts. You've got to stop wrapping her on the trunk, Colonel. That elephant is diabolical, Stilts. Come on, Queenie. Come on. Come on now. Now you've got to sleep. Mind what I told you. And from now on, you better stay away from Uncle Rufus. Look, what is it? I can't stay here all night. Sure, right, all right. Just for a while, you understand.
that do? Sure. You're just lonesome. That's all. I know how you feel. I get lonely sometimes, too. Did I ever tell you about the family I met? There was Billy. And Lucy and Mrs. Hines. They were awful nice. Wanted me to stay with them, too. But one can't have everything. At least we got each other. Davy, I've got... No, 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 no. The whole thing could be a fiasco. Please, Uncle Rufus. Just give him a chance, Colonel. Now, he's been rehearsing her in secret for weeks now. It's a crackerjack, too, the whole act. It takes months to properly train an elephant. You know that still. But she could have do it. Queenie, drinking out of a baby bottle? Oh, it's impossible. Colonel. It's called minding the baby. Oh, 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 Nana, look! Minding the baby, you say? What a lovely baby she is. Father, give the baby a rattle. The baby wants to play. action of business. We'll be the biggest show on earth. Long way to go for a bankroll like that, Colonel. Not if I take a few shortcuts, still. <laughs> Like everything's turning up aces, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh. 
three fours. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be back in a little while. Elephant. <laughs> I play for cash. This elephant is like money in the bank. You can get two thousand dollars for it tomorrow. Nope, like I said, cash. Well, if I lose, I'll dispose of her for you. You needn't worry, unless you're afraid to bet. Okay. Show down. Yes. There's my two thousand. I owe you all right. All right. Again, I thank you, Bob. Luke here will come by tomorrow to collect. Tomorrow? Isn't that what you said? That's a figure of speech. I've got to contact a buyer. A week. Okay. Luke? $2,000 a week. Understand? Sir, you have my word. Bob, your word ain't worth diddly do to me. Lou Carroll, stay with you until I get my money. Oh, well, Luke ain't much on brains, but he's got muscles he ain't never used. <laughs> to it that the show is ready to move when I get back. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Who 
who's that? Who? Oh. He's a buff. Circus crazy like all the other rubes. Now, he'll work around here a little while and then move on. Now, I've got to go to town. You stay here. to uh, ship the elephant to your zoo tomorrow. You have money, of course. I normally don't carry such a sizable amount. Well, I specifically asked for cash. However, I did bring a down payment, $1,000. Uh, you'll have the rest when the elephant is put aboard the train. You have the bill of sale? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Now, you will never regret buying this animal. That I can guarantee. Ship the elephant to your zoo tomorrow. Ship the elephant to your zoo tomorrow. The elephant to your zoo tomorrow. To your zoo tomorrow. Zoo tomorrow. Zoo Why would I do a thing like that? Colonel, you've been gambling again. Yeah, tomorrow's payday, Colonel. I'd like to see my money. Oh, now, wait a moment here. Yes, let's see our money. <coughs> uh, well. There you are. Not a cent missing. Sorry, Colonel. Well, Davy? I just don't understand. I was sleeping. I heard. I mean, I thought I heard. You thought you heard? Well, you just apologized to the colonel. Well, now, there's no need for that. The boy's just overly fond of the elephant. It's perfectly natural that he should have a <laughs> nightmare. Now, you go to bed, Davy, and we'll just forget we had this little misunderstanding. was right, Queenie. It was nothing but a dream. But I'd sure hate to lose you to any old zoo. Being locked up behind those iron bars, you'd go crazy! It was a 
wasn't a dream. That's what woke me, the man from the zoo. He was smoking a cigar. Gotta tell the others. They wouldn't believe me. They'd just say, a lot of people smoke cigars. What are we gonna do, Queenie? Can't let the man take you back to the zoo. Anyway, you don't belong to him. You belong to Miss Jeffries. Miss Jeffries, that's it. I got her schedule somewhere. We gotta find her. Oh, I found it. Miss Jeffries told me to take good care of you, Queenie, and that's just what I'm gonna do. <laughs> don't want everyone to wake up. Be ready in just a sec. <laughs> a zillion miles last night. Six or seven at least. Trouble is, I don't know where we are. Well, we better get moving anyway. When the Colonel wakes up, he's gonna be looking for us. How did you sleep? Slow. I've only got a couple left. Hi, Queenie! <laughs> Shadrach. I might have known. Wherever Queenie goes, you just have to follow, don't you? Well, I can't take you back. And I can't leave you. So, come on. Let's see, Miss Jeffress was in Johnson City last week. That should be south of here. So came over there, east. So we go this way, 20 miles. She's supposed to be about in Georgetown this week, so that's another 10 miles. So that's 30 in all, going straight this way. Ah, oh, Queenie, that's the second bench you've been through since last night. You're supposed to lift the rails, not just walk through them. Come on, better keep an account of all the damages. Should make it in a couple of days easy. All we gotta do now is find out where Georgetown is. Perhaps he knows where Georgetown is. You two stay here. Hey, Mr. Wait, Mr. Wait! Hey, Mr. Wait! Well, 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 for heaven's sake. Oh, Jezebel, looky here now. 
Hey, you're up bright and early, boy. Yes, sir. I just want to know if you know which way it is to Georgetown. Georgetown, is it? Well, now, you uh, planning to buy something, boy? No, sir. Well, that's a pity. Well, you follow this here road and turn right at the first crossing. Then you go about four miles to the main road. What's that? He's an Angora goat. If I go that hey, way... I'll we'll... bet he's worth something, ain't he? Yes, are you, uh, you all alone, boy? Maybe you and me could come to some kind of mutual arrangement. Of course, I will come out the worst for it. Yes, Bill! Yes, Bill! Did. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Now get down. Go on, kneel. This is getting to be an awful long list. Three fences bust, one apple tree torn up, one haystack eaten. But don't you see, I had to uh, sell that elephant. I will, of course, make a, uh, a full confession to Molly and try to repay her in uh, some way. Meanwhile, we must press forward, uh, uh, start again, and uh, look forward to new uh, successes. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Luke, just, just the man I'm looking for. Now, <clears throat> here's the plan. When we get to Grassy Forks, I'll send Davy and the rest out to put up posters, distribute handbills, and so forth. You and I will take Queenie no. and get... Shush, listen to me. We'll take Queenie into the freight station. No. And give her to Corbett, collect our money, No. And then... No what? No elephant. What, what do you mean, no elephant? She's gone. Oh, that's impossible. Where could she go? She's got... Uh, 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 put me down. Put me down. See? The boy took it. Well, why didn't you stop him? What's wrong? Davy's run off with the elephant. Oh, no! Yeah, well, I, I know it's sad, but uh, he still must be suffering under the delusion that his dream was true. Poor boy. Suffering illusions like that. What are we standing around for? Why don't we go find him? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not panic. You go get my horse. Now, uh, there's no reason for everyone to go. He couldn't have walked far last night. Luke and I will have him spotted within an hour or two. Now, uh, the rest of you go on to Grassy Fork. I'll be along later. Which way did he go? All right. Now, don't worry. I'll track him down. After all, how do you hide an elephant in broad daylight? <laughs> Come on, maybe we can find something to eat. Matthew? What, Abe? 
I'm tired of fishing. Me too. Blimey, Queenie, why do you have to go and get stuck? This is going to take all day. Where he's heading, all right. Molly's due there this week. Hurry up, Luke. We're wasting time. Come on here. I fight. Stand up. You better get out of these wet clothes first. Go on, get in there. <laughs> what? Darnation! Come back here! What? All right! Just for that, you can sleep out. A 
few extra days. 48 hours at the most. Now, surely that's not unreasonable under the circumstances. Now, look, I, I've acted in good faith. I, I paid you half uh, my debt, $1,000. And uh, as soon as I find the boy, and I, I will find the boy, then I'll give the elephant to Mr. Corbett. Mr. Corbett will give me the money, and I'll give you the money. All right, all right, I'm coming. What, what do you want? I want my elephant. Where is it? Oh, oh, oh Mr. Corbett, I, I was just talking about you this very minute. Come in, come, come in. Uh, I have been waiting at the station at Grassy Fork for six hours. Why didn't you bring the elephant? Well, now I wanted to, Mr. Corbett. Believe me, I wanted to. Colonel Ryder, you and I had an agreement for which I paid you $1,000 in advance that you to would... deliver the elephant, and I will. But unfortunately, it's going to take a little time. You see, the elephant's not here. <laughs> the, uh, well, as a matter of fact, uh, he's been... Stolen. Stolen. Well, b borrowed, if you will. You remember the little boy that you saw sleeping with the elephant? Well, uh, he's gone off with her. I don't believe it. Well, th that was exactly my reaction, uh, but it's true. Now, evidently, he didn't want to see the elephant go to a zoo, but I assure you, Mr. Corbett, that I'll have that elephant back here before you can say, forget it. Forget it. I haven't liked this whole setup from the start. I want my money back now. Well, unfortunately, that's not possible. You see, I've already disposed of it uh, in partial payment of a debt that I owe this gentleman. I see. It's a conspiracy. You're in this together. To build the Chicago Zoo out of $1,000. Well, you won't get away with it. I will prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. My good man, I, I am not your good man, and I do not believe the story that the boy stole the elephant. As for you, sir. Sit down. Shut up. Luke. You sure you saw this boy take this elephant? Yeah. All right, Bub, I'll give you 48 hours if Mr. Uh, Corbett agrees. Why should I? Well, you get your elephant, I get my money. We both get what we want, and nobody gets hurt. Uh, we hope. And what if he decides to uh, skip out? He won't. Not with Luke here watchdogging him. He won't. Now, um, Mr. Corbett, I'll wire every sheriff in the state if necessary. All right. 48 hours. Two baskets of apples. They're awful green, Queenie. I sure hope you don't get in a stomachache. Must come to around $30 already. Hope I'm doing the right thing, taking you back to Miss Jeffries. Better get some sleep. We'll be started as soon as the sun rises.
kind of hot. I'll keep you warm. This ought to keep you warm. Shh, Queenie. Emmy! Emmy! He's gonna kill us! Come on, we gotta get out of here! Come on, Shadrack! <laughs> We've been going the wrong way. You still don't look too good. You better lay down and rest. Don't suppose there's any elephant doctors round here. But perhaps there's a horse doctor. But we gotta find someone who won't tell on us. Look, remember that family I told you about? <laughs> well, I'm gonna go and see them. Billy and Lucy, they'll know a safe doctor. Now, you stay here and keep out of sight. You promise? <laughs> Shadrach, you too. I won't be gone long. You really got a problem. I've got to get back to Queenie. If she's got a cold, it could turn into elephant pneumonia. We could give her some castor oil. Only, I don't think we've got enough. Castor oil won't do any good. We could take her to old Doc McGivery's. He lives just north of town. Billy! Lucy! I'm going down to the store, children, so finish your chores. Oh, Mom. And I'll bring you some ice cream. Okay. This doctor of yours won't tell anybody, will he? Nah, he's a friend. And we can get there without being seen. This wood's all the way. Okay, let's go. Lucy, you finish the peas. I want to go, too. No, you stay here. I'll tell Grandpa. Lucy, you wouldn't. Come on. Did you really steal her? I had to. What's the colonel gonna do if he catches you? Nothing. Set put me in jail for life, probably. 
See, Lucy, you better not tell. I mean, Grandpa takes being sheriff kind of serious. <laughs> yeah, what'd you say it sounded like, Elmer? <laughs> terrifying, just terrifying. It ain't funny, Sheriff. Whatever it was tore a hole through my barn big enough for a darn train to go through. All right, we'll take a look at it. Are you sure you haven't been hitting the jug? No, sir. I couldn't get that drunk. Nobody could. Help, Sheriff! Sheriff, help! Help me, Sheriff! Don't let it get me! Don't let it get me! Lock me up, please! What have you been doing, Reb? Bathing in the stuff? No, thing out there. Drunk my whiskey, poured it on me, scared me cold sober. First time in 20 years. Now, what did? A thing, I tell you. Looked like a billy goat turned into a wild elephant with long hair. Then it grew a nose that long, Sheriff, and took my bottle. Boy, did you tie one on this time. A wild elephant? Oh, come on now, Elmer. Have you ever seen a long-haired, whiskey-drinking elephant? Nope. You ain't seen the hole in my barn yet, either. Queenie! Shadrach! They've gone! They've both gone! Gone where? I don't know, but we gotta find them. Come on, this way! <laughs> sick last night, but she's still eating them. Come on, we gotta find them. <laughs> while this critter lays waste to the whole countryside. All right. All right, you ain't got me convinced yet, but I guess I better look into it. You go get the mayor. I'll see if I can round up some of the boys to help. Come on, Reb. Huh? We're gonna see if we can find your elephant. Oh, really? grandfather for help after all. The way she's going, she could hurt somebody. She might even get into town. Wait a minute, where are you going? Oh, oh now, boy, oh, 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 there. Oh. Left Come on, maybe he'll give us a lift. Get in the house and lock the doors. Lock the doors? He's an elephant. Listen, woman, do as you're told. I can't, he'll go right into the window. What do I do? Can you give us a ride? We've got to wait till we've got to get in the I'll town. take care of the children. You just get in the house. Just get in the house. All right, but hurry back. Get up, boy. Get up now. Come on. After all, we've only got Reb's and Elmer's word for it. We don't know if there really is an elephant. Now, Reb, you say you're the last one that saw this animal. Where was it? Yeah, I was the last one to see it. Uh, outside of town here, about a half mile on the back road. Why, that thing must have been 50 feet tall. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Uh, he was with the circus that was here last month. Davey, what happened? I'm not going to try to put the elephant in there, either. Sheriff, I demand that you do something. But I will hold him in custody till we get this thing straightened out. Very well, sir. And I want you to know I am holding you strictly responsible. All right, I am strictly responsible. Now, David, we're going to have to get your elephant out of town while we've still got some town left. Now, you can, manager? Yes, sir. All right, come on, let's go. But where are we going to put her? Helen, suppose we can handle a couple of guests for dinner? Why not? I'll just warm up another bale of hay. Come on, son. Come on, Queenie. Come on. And where do you think you're going, ain't you, mighty sprite? Well, I hate I you. I was pleased with yourself. Let Let me... that elephant come in here and Let I waste my property, here. chase I... every one of my cows, wearing my I delivery wagon. Best, best. You better eat. You're not hungry. Me neither. Well, I've moved things around so you have a room for tonight, Davy. You kids haven't touched your food. We're not hungry, Mom. Things could be worse. I don't see how, ma'am. I truly don't. Poor Queen. You do believe I didn't really steal her, don't you, Mrs. Owen? Oh, of course we do, Davy. We all do. You come with me. I'll get you some. Did you feed that thing in? Yes, sir. I did. We all did. For the last two hours, 
Did you send a telegram? I did. Got one, too. Things are getting so complicated, I don't know what belongs to who. The Colonel says the elephant belongs to him. Davy says it belongs to Miss Jeffries, and the mayor says if he don't get paid, he's going to sell it himself. A million dollar elephant stolen by a runaway boy. Fantastic reward for information. Notify Colonel Rufus Ryder. As soon as I got that, I got a message to him. He'll be here first thing in the morning. What about the telegram to Miss Jeffries? No answer yet. One thing we know, she's left Georgetown. So I sent a tracer. <laughs> Sound. <laughs> uh, good old Queenie. You. Yes, yeah, she looks all right. She's all yours. Shall we complete our transaction? I, I can make arrangements to have her delivered to you today. And she's a, a real bargain. I'll, I'll tell you that, sir. Oh, Rufus, isn't there something you'd like to tell me, too? Oh, Molly, I've. in a manner of speaking, Queenie belongs to you now, more than anybody. Mr. Corbett will give her a good home, Davy. That zoo of his is like a big, beautiful park. Of course, it is up to you to decide whether Queenie goes with him or back to the circus with me. Well, if there aren't any bars or cages or anything, and there's going to be all those children like you said... It's like I said, Davy. I guess it would be better for Queenie than doing four shows a day and traveling across three states every summer. I'll just go and say goodbye to her. Miss Molly, this is a balance for Queenie. Thank you. Now about those damages. So you see, Queenie, it's gonna be best for everybody. It's really a children's zoo. And you know how much you like children. Instead of just having me for a friend, you'll have hundreds of friends. A lot of them, so poor, they couldn't ever come to see in the circus. Now, you won't be lonely. Honest. And I'll get him to take along Shadrach, just in case. And me, I'll come over to see you as often as I can. You know I will. Colonel Ryder? Yeah? I want to talk to you about Davy. Oh. Fine boy, Davy, yeah. Sometimes we all have to give up things we love, Davy. But you did make the best decision for Queenie. Now you have to make a decision about yourself. Davy, I've taken over your Uncle Rufus' whole circus and all the acts. I'd be mighty proud if you'd come along with us, too. 
Thank you, ma'am. Of course, I realize you are a very popular boy. There are others clamoring for your company. Well, we want you, Davy, very much. If you'd be willing to stay. That's for sure, son. You could have your own room and go to school with us, too. You could visit the circus next summer, stay as long as you like, and see all your old friends. I'm much obliged to all of you. But I guess it's up to you, Uncle Rufus. No, boy, it's up to you. Now, you were born to the circus. You could do worse than follow the road to the end of your days. But this could be a good life for you, too, if this is what you really want. I want to stay here more than anything. Davy. <laughs> oh, Mush. Come on, Davy. Let's play a game of hide and seek. Not it. Not, Not it. it. Lucy did. Lucy did. Ah, oh, come on, you guys. Why are you happy to be here? Well, everything worked out just fine, Molly. Now that you and I are going to be partners. <laughs> partners? Why, you big bag of wind, you? You owe me $2,000. And you are going to work off every single penny selling peanuts. <laughs> I suggest that you put me in charge oh, immediately. Okay, put you in charge of anything. You would take over my whole circus in less than two weeks. Come on,